Okay, so today we will be talking about geometry. Geometry is all kinds of different shapes, but mostly what we're going to be talking about today is including points, lines, and two-dimensional shapes. Now, the first type of geometry that we are going to discuss is points. Now, it is important to note that points have no size and they only show position. These here are some examples of points, and I'm sure you've seen points on graphs in your other math classes. And in those graphs, you will notice that they show position on a type of graph. Now, the next type of geometry that we're going to talk about are lines. Um, it is important to note that lines must be straight. There are no curves. They have no thickest thickness and they extend in both directions infinitely. Now this means by when you look at these lines here, they have arrows on both ends. This means that these lines go on forever. They have no stopping point. I am sure that you have seen lines in some of your other math classes on graphs that show that these, these amounts of data go on forever. They do not stop at a certain point. The next type of geometry that we are doing, going to discuss are triangles. Now, triangles, as I'm sure you have probably, probably previously learned before, are any sort of closed two-dimensional shape that have straight sides, and they always have three sides and three angles that add up to 180 degrees. As you can see by these three pictures here, that these have three sides, and the angles are always going to add up to 180 degrees. It does not matter whether you have this triangle here where this angle is much smaller as compared to this angle here. They will always add up to 180 degrees and they will always have three sides. Okay, so when you're making a triangle, you know that a triangle has three sides, which are going to be represented by these three toothpicks and three vertices, which are going to be represented by these three marshmallows. Now, to construct a triangle, you know that any triangle simply has three vertices and three sides. So, all you have to do is put your sides into your marshmallows, which are your vertices, and make sure that you make a closed shape, meaning that it cannot be open at all. And that there is what your triangle is going to look like when you have your three sides and your three vertices. And that is how you construct a triangle. The next type of geometry figures that we are going to talk about are quadrilaterals. Quadrilaterals are closed two-dimensional shapes. They are any shape that have four sides, and those sides must be straight. Now, looking at these three shapes here, yes, you can tell that they are very different, but if you look at all of them, they do have four sides, and all of these sides are straight. So once again, quadrilaterals are any closed two-dimensional shape, any shape with four sides, and these four sides must be straight. Okay, now that you have formed your triangle, you're going to form a quadrilateral. So a quadrilateral you know has four sides and four vertices. Now, those four sides can be any shape, but they must remain a closed figure. So, just so that we know that we're not making any other shape, I'm going to pick four sides here, and I'm going to make one of these sides a different, sh different length, just, just to make sure that it's a quadrilateral and four marshmallows, which are your vertices. And once again, we're going to construct these connecting your vertices to your sides and making sure that it is a closed shape.
and that there is what your quadrilateral is going to look like because you're going to have four sides, four vertices, and it is a closed shape. And that is how you construct a quadrilateral. Now, the last type of geometry figures that we're going to talk about are parallelograms. Now, parallelograms are a lot like the previously mentioned quadrilaterals. They are four-sided, which means they have four sides and they are a two-dimensional shape. Now, the only difference between quadrilaterals and parallelograms are opposite sides are parallel, meaning that those sides will never touch no matter how far out you extend the sides of those shapes and opposite sides are equal, meaning that this side here and this side here are the exact same length. Once again, parallelograms are four-sided and two-dimensional. They are, <laughs> their opposite sides are parallel and their opposite sides are equal. Okay, now that you have formed your triangle and your quadrilateral, we're going to form a special kind of quadrilateral, a parallelogram. Now, in a parallelogram, you know that it has four vertices, which is the same as a quadrilateral. However, in a parallelogram, your opposite sides are parallel and equal. So that means that two of your sides are going to be one length, and two of your sides are going to be another length. Now, when you go to form these, you know that opposite sides have to be parallel, meaning that the sides are never going to touch if you're to extend them out further than just the shape that you're creating. So, the easiest way to do this that I've found is to put your vertices on two of the sides and then put your other sides in here. So, as you see here, it is very similar to what a quadrilateral is going to be because it does have four sides and it does have four vertices, just like your quadrilateral. However, if you look here at your parallelogram, opposite sides are equal, meaning this one is the same as this one in length, and this side is the same as this side in equal in length. And they're also parallel to one another, which means if you were to take these side lengths and extend them out further, they're never going to touch or cross. So, this here is how you create a parallelogram. In this video, we're going to look at how we can find the area of a rectangle and a parallelogram. Rectangles have some type of width and some type of length to them. The way we calculate the area, or how much stuff it takes to fill up the rectangle, is we simply multiply the length times the width. A parallelogram is very similar because if we were to cut the parallelogram on the side here, and move that triangle to the other side, it would fit in there like a puzzle piece, and we would have another rectangle. So we multiply the same dimensions. We'll call these dimensions the height. It doesn't show up very well. How about we put it in orange? We'll call it the height, how tall it is, and we'll have some type of base. So the area of the parallelogram we get by multiplying the height times the base. An important note about the height and the base, I don't want to think about height as up, and the base as bottom, because that'll get us in trouble doing these geometric formulas. Instead, I want to think that the height and base, or the height must meet with the width, or the base, maybe base would be a better word for that, at a perfect 90 degree angle, or a perfect corner like it would in a rectangle, or in this angle right down here. <laughs> Thank you.